days of the death egg. Teal said, Well, it's not the Inkman thing the plane is like. That's what counts angling. That's why Inkman went after the little plane in the first place. Next time he appeared, he built his death egg mark two around it, chaining it and dragging it down again. Applejack raised an eyebrow. Death egg? What's that all about? Sonic asked, Remember the Ark? Remember how it was a research facility in narrow space? Twilight, Spike, Rainbow Dash, Applejack, and Scoot all nodded confirmed information. So Sonic said, The Death Egg was similar, except this space station was made to be a fortress to help spread Eggman's tyranny all over the planet. I still remember it as one of Eggman's greater weapons. Teal said, We dealt with the first Death Egg when Eggman and his robots raided West Island. That's where I was born, and it's also where I met Sonic. We had to chase Eggman across the island, but eventually led us to that city we were at earlier. I remember now that's where we were. Eggman's me metropolis. Rainbow growled. So that was Eggman's city. So I guess based on everything else we know about that jerk. Tails and Silly said, Sure, Rainbow. Anyway, after we dealt with Eggman there, we followed him up to his winged fortress, where he used the shuttle to get to the Death Egg. Sonic managed to hitch a ride with him and got on board the Death Egg, where he battled the Silver Sonic and the Death Egg robot. The fighting set off a chain reaction to cause an explosion within the Death Egg. It's not been destroyed, but we later found it crash landed on Angel Island. Knuckles is home. Twilight asked, So, is that how you guys met? Knuckles rubbed his head. Yeah. They all wanted to consider setting traps and just in general making things rough for them to be an example instead of first meeting Twilight. Elzak asked, What are you talking about, Knuckles? Knuckles explained, All about Eggman shortly after the death they landed on Angel Island. Because my duty, I didn't get to leave the Angel Island very often. As a result, I was a bit, uh, side grinned gullible. Knuckles glared and yelled, Oi! I'll tell you it! Sonic held up his hands, Hey, relax, Knuckles. Just trying to help out. Knuckles growled, Well, y'all, you keep your colorful commentary to yourself, wise guy. Sonic rolled his eyes, Fine, don't mind me, Captain Tressing. That's why he'd ask, What does that mean? Knuckles looked over sheepishly as he said, well, you see, Twilight, back then I didn't get a lot of visitors to my island, if any at all. So, when I met Eggman after his death day cross landed, I kind of sort of believed him when he said that Sonic and Tails were the bar guys. Rainbow Dash and Mila shouted, You what? He ended up on your island with a huge space station thing, and you actually listened to what he was saying? Knuckles growled, Hi, up to that point, I was pretty much cut off from the rest of the world outside of Asian Island. You try carrying out an important duty and completely isolated for three years. See how you're willing to trust the first person you see. He retorted, I know it wouldn't matter what anybody told me, even if I did spend a long time by myself in that situation. I still regard anything I was told with suspicion. Applejack coughed, Oh, please, Rainbow. We all know that some probably claim to know you and how cool you are. You just only give them a bad feeling of that. Sats, that was a safe isolated from the rest of the world. Probably had no idea what the death egg was, and Eggman fed him a buzz of lass. Rainbow Dazzle looked ready to launch into one of your usual arguments with Applejack. Or if she could say another word. Why did I suddenly flapped her wings so I looked it off the ground? I hear Knuckles hovering just above him. This he spoke in her soft, sweet voice. Oh, please don't be angry at Rainbow Dash, Knuckles. She didn't mean anything bad by what she said. It's okay. I'm sure for your reason you believe Dr. Eggman. It's because you have a very trusting heart. You all believe that there's good in everybody. I think that's really sweet, actually. Knuckles grunted. Oh, cause us one way to look at our flow shot. Enid smiled. Who knows? Maybe all is the reason. Sark shrugged. Yeah, I guess you could look at it that way, Flareshy. And Knuckles has wised up a bit, at least as far as Eggman's concerned. Randy said, Man, I suppose that's good. So everyone is okay with the fact that you all have been, but it has before. Deals giggled. It's happened more than once, Randy. Saga and Knuckles are just funny when they're together. Cream Man. If Sonic was able to destroy Dr. Eggman's death egg, I did Knuckles learn the truth about. So they did part from the teams. Weird things. Sonic and Knuckles always really fight for fun. Rainbow asked, You guys are okay with that? Sonic grinned. Sure. Everybody's used to it by now. It looks like something silver goes on between you and Applejack. Our reserve point chuckled. <laughs> you got that for us, girl. Rainbow often wants to throw down when something when she's not being lazy. Simon glared at Applejack out the corner of her eye, and loudly said, Right, well, I think we've rested enough. Shouldn't we get going and find our friends? 
Sonic stood up before replying, I guess you're right, Dash. He still looked around the others and asked, What do you guys think? Everybody nodded in agreement as they all stood up, picking up anything they had with them. As he was picking up her scooter, Scootaloo walked next to Tails and asked, What about the other time you mentioned Tails? You know, when you said Eggman built another death egg around the little planet or something? The fox replied, Oh yeah, that. Well, that happened some months later after the original death egg's destruction. Around the time little planet's had an appearance. So I found that Eggman was up to no good on the continent neighboring the one he explored a few months back. So, when he came back to get me to ask if I came along. Of course I agreed, didn't want to miss out on their adventure. After we arrived on the continent, we started searching the ruins of an old castle in the surrounding forest. As the sun went down, we saw the little planet had already revealed itself. However, it not only been taken down again, but Eggman was building something around it. Was we later found it was a Death Egg Mark II. As I asked, why well, was it building a new Death Egg around it? Sox supplied the answer, because it was more cost effective. He was using the little plant like a massive organic battery, similar to how he used small animals to power older robots. As it turned out, the doc had been playing for this since our last showdown. He was explaining, Aside from Eggman, we also had to deal with Metal Sonic, whom Eggman apparently revived when the little planet was approaching our world. We had to deal with both of them as we pursued them across the continent, eventually following them up to Eggman's Sky Fortress. Before he was destroyed, Eggman and Metal Sonic were able to escape to a new, still looking at complete death egg. We managed to follow this space by taking both escape pods and landing on Fortress. Spike asked, yeah, then what happened? Sonic said, well, we went looking for Dr. Eggman and Metal Sonic, of course. After they briefly fought us together, Metal Sonic came back to challenge me and Tails to another race. Despite the obstacle course we were racing on, we were able to beat him. He disappeared into the depths of the Death Egg before getting, after getting electrocuted. Skulu asked, That's when you went after Dr. Eggman, right? Tails nodded, Yeah. We followed him to the heart of the Death Egg, where he was waiting with his egg cart machine. It was a tough battle, but we managed to beat him. Not long after the egg cart was destroyed, the chain reaction spread throughout the Death Egg Mark II, causing explosives on the inside of the station. He managed to find more escape pods and used them to escape, allowing us to return to our world while Death Egg powered down. We would tell you more, but uh, all of that was in Sonic 4 Episode 2, and since they never released in Episode 3, we don't know what happened next! Rainbow asked, you mean he didn't destroy it? Sonic said, we weren't able to show at the time, Rainbow. We hadn't counted on Dr. Eggman building a new Death Egg around Little Planet. We destroyed Death Egg at that point, Little Planet would have been caught in the blast. Rainbow murmured, oh yeah, good point. Tails said, by forcing it to power down, we made sure Eggman would have had to repair the Death Egg in order to use it. Can't for causing any more harm to Little Planet. School asked, But you guys did eventually free the Little Planet and destroy the Death Egg, right? Deal said, Well, before you can get any further, a lot of explosives from somewhere in the jungle startled everybody, some of them leaping up in shock. Attack run above. Who's that? Spike exclaimed. Suddenly, the clearing we were in seemed to get darker. Hey, where did Sun go? Sleep Bell asked. Knuckles looked up to the sky, only to see a large red ship with a familiar insignia on the side that looked like a shark. Look! This is not one of the egg fleet ships! He asked while pointing out to it. Tails said, I think you're right, Knuckles. We better get everyone out here! Almstrak looked back at him and asked, Wah! A second later, one of the cans of the ship fired a shell that crashed through the jungle canopy and exploded something nearby. It went right through the planes on his way. Almstrak went and said, Well, never mind. That's there's my sign! So I called, Come on, people, let's move it! He then led the way to the deeper into the jungle. Twilight, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, hot his heels while Teal stayed close to Rarity and Fluttershy. Spike Lee got to her back and leaving behind to leave as he ran. Spike pulled Cream along as he carried Cheese, Skulu, Sleep Bell in her arms. As the group members ran as fast as they could to the jungle, the ship continued firing exploding shells down into the jungle. Most of them landed far away, due to the ship being, not being able to keep a solid lock on them, due to the jungle canopy. But a few came worryingly close to exploding on top of them. And then one shell exploded behind the group, Rainbow Dash asked, Jeez, how long can that thing keep this up? Tails as he ran behind her called, Who knows? If the whole egg fleet is here, there's probably enough arsenal to bring this jungle to the ground. It was that groan. Well, this is breaking up bad memories of the chase of the invasion. As they continued running, Tails soon knows they were running out of room to run. Not far ahead, the path ended with a steep drop. There was no telling how far the drop would be. But he also noticed there's something near the edge of the drop. Raising a finger to point, he called, 
Hey, Sonic, look at those flowers! Sonic looked and saw the suit tail friend was referring to. All right, good thing, Tails. He called back before speeding ahead in the group. The wind directly behind him started to pick up. As he got closer to the flowers, he planted his left feet against the ground and slid past him, the wind flowing after him. The pony soon caught up with him. As the Tails, Knuckles, and Cream wanted to ask what he was doing, he noticed that the top of the flowers were beginning to spin like Tails' tails. Soon afterwards, the flowers split from the stems, spinning and hovering in the air. Those flowers can fly? Twilight asked. Sonic nodded, yep! And then waved his arm, saying, Let's go! We'll bring them out of the hair! Twilight, Applejack, and Rainbow Dash hurried over to Sonic as he grabbed the furthest flower. And then grabbed one of Applejack's hooves, while Twilight wrapped her forelegs around the air pony's hind legs. As Rainbow followed the flowers and began to fly away, Tails grabbed onto the next flower and grabbed one of the flowers side's hooves, holding her onto Spike while Spike held onto her back, ready to wrap her forelegs around her hind legs as they lifted off. Knuckles, still holding onto the cream, grabbed the last flower and followed the rest of the group deeper into the jungle, the seconds before a shell exploded against the spot they had been. The wind blew all the flowers in St. Gerald's direction, towards the deepest part of the jungle, where to be able to lose the ship raining down fire in their heads. The only problem was that they weren't all being carried off the same direction. As they flew, the flowers would drift further apart from each other, heading for different landing spots. When Red Dash noticed this, he was left unsure what's to fall for a minute, before finally deciding to stick with Sonic's flower. Assuming after it, it disappeared soon into the jungle.